Hi, my name is Jintek Lim. Today, I will be talking about how we improved nested virtualization performance close to native execution. Nested virtualization is a discipline of running a virtual machine or a VM inside a VM. This is a key technology for cloud computing, which is the dominant computing platform nowadays. Cloud providers typically give you a virtual machine, but if you want to run a ready virtualized workload in the cloud, nested virtualization is a key enabler. For example, if you want to migrate your workload, including a hypervisor and VMs to the cloud, nested virtualization can make the whole workload run inside the VM provided by the cloud provider. In addition, modern operating systems such as Windows and Linux already have built-in hypervisors. So to use the full functionality of these operating systems inside the VM, you need nested virtualization support. This is why major cloud providers such as Microsoft Azure and Google Cloud support nested virtualization. While nested virtualization is very useful, one of the biggest drawbacks of nested virtualization is its poor performance. Applications in a nested VM run many times slower compared to native execution. This is not the case for virtualization or single level virtualization, which performs close to native execution. The key for the performance difference between the two cases is how much hypervisors involve for virtual machine execution. Let's take a deep dive into how they work. For the single level virtualization, a virtual machine exits to the underlying hypervisor when executing some instructions that need hypervisor's intervention. Some of the examples are instructions accessing an I.O. device provided by the hypervisor or instructions to shut down the system. The instruction emulation can be done quickly since the, since the hypervisor runs directly on hardware and has full control of it. On the other hand, for the nested virtualization where we run a hypervisor and a VM inside the VM, the hypervisor running inside the VM does not have native access to the hardware. So anytime this hypervisor accesses the hardware, it exits to the underlying hypervisor. There could be multiple exits during the instruction emulation. Since multiple hypervisors come into play, let me introduce a bit of terminology. The hypervisor runs inside the VM is called the guest hypervisor, and a VM crea created by the guest hypervisor is called a nested VM. The hypervisor runs directly on the hardware is called the host hypervisor. So coming back to the discussion, to handle a single exit from a nested VM, the guest hypervisor needs to exit potentially multiple times to the host hypervisor, and this makes the cost of emulating one instruction in the guest hypervisor more expensive than the single level virtual virtualization case. Even when the guest hypervisor is done with the emulation and tries to return back to the return back to the to the nested VM, it also requires the host hypervisor's intervention. This is because the instruction to enter a nested VM needs access to the hardware support for virtualization, which the guest hypervisor doesn't have. So, the host hypervisor emulates this instruction by preparing a nested VM execution and running the nested VM directly. In other words, the host hypervisor intervenes for every switch between the guest hypervisor and nested VMs, which makes the cost of emulation even more expensive. In summary, to handle a single exit from a nested VM, there will be many more exits to the host hypervisor. This phenomena is called exit multiplication, and this is the key reason why nested virtualization is slow. To better understand the overhead of nested virtualization, let me give you an example. When a hypervisor runs a VM, it is typical that the hypervisor provides virtual I.O. devices, such as network card, to its VM. With nested virtualization, 
both the host and the guest advisor provide virtual I.O. devices to its own VM, respectively. So, when an SC VM wants to send data over a network, this is what's going to happen. First, nested VM will make data ready and will execute an instruction to talk to a network card to send the data. Since the network card is emulated by the guest hypervisor, the control first needs to switch to the host hypervisor and then to the guest hypervisor. To emulate the send, to emulate the send operation, the guest hypervisor gets data from the nested VM's address space and then again, the guest hypervisor executes an instruction to ask, to ask the network card to send the data. The guest hypervisor is still interacting with the virtual I.O. device, so the request is handled by the host hypervisor. The host hypervisor gets the data from the guest hypervisor's address space and finally sends the data using the physical network card. Once data is sent, the host hypervisor returns back to the guest hypervisor, and the guest hypervisor also returns back to the nested VM, which needs to go through the host hypervisor. So in summary, one instruction emulation for a nested VM involves three exits to the host hypervisor, along with multiple data transfer across different virtual virtualization levels. And this is quite expensive. There is an alternative to using virtual I.O. device, which is a technique called path-through. Path-through makes a VM or a nested VM interact with a physical I.O. device directly instead of exiting to the hypervisors. In this diagram, a nested VM is interacting with a physical I.O. device, which is a separate device from the device the host hypervisor is using. So, Sending data over a network is done with just one step without any hypervisor intervention. Therefore, this approach can provide good I.O. performance. But, because the hypervisors do not interpose I.O. device accesses from a nested VM, it loses virtualization benefits like migration. It is very hard, if not impossible, to encapsulate and restore the assigned device uh, the assigned physical I.O. device state in general, and this is why widely used hypervisors such as KVM and Zen doesn't support migration with path-through. This is not the case for virtual I.O. device case, where hypervisors have full control of virtual I.O. devices and therefore provide full virtualization, full virtualization benefits. So the question is that, can we get good performance without exit multiplication, but also retain virtualization benefits like migration? To address this problem, we introduce Direct Virtual Hardware, or DVH. DVH is a novel approach that enables a host hypervisor to directly provide virtual hardware to nested VMs without the intervention of guest hypervisors. Now that the host hypervisor is the one that provides virtual hardware to the nested VM, we just need a single exit instead of multiple of them. The virtual hardware provided by the host hypervisor appears to the guest hypervisor as an additional hardware resource, which is not necessary for guest hypervisor's execution. Just like a hypervisor would do with additional physical hardware, for example, in case of path-through, the guest hypervisor can allow a nested VM to access additional virtual hardware without the guest hypervisor's intervention. This approach is transparent to a nested VM, that means nested VM is not aware of changes the way virtual hardware is provided. Therefore, no changes are required for the nested VM. With DVH, we are replacing multiple exits with a single exit, so a nested VM can potentially run as fast as a single level VM. Not only that, the host hypervisor still interposes for hardware accesses from nested VM, so the host hypervisor retains interposition and its benefit, its benefit like migration. Lastly, since virtual hardware is just software, we don't need extra real hardware and that makes DVH easy to deploy and scale. 
we introduced four deviation mechanisms on Intel x86 architecture to handle frequent access from a nested VM. In this talk, I will focus on two deviation mechanisms due to time constraints. Let's start with virtual path through, which improves I.O. performance. As we discussed previously, using virtual I.O. device for nested virtualization triggers axis multiplication whenever a nested VM accesses the virtual I.O. device emulated by the guest hypervisor. Virtual path through is a DVH technique to allow a nested VM to interact with the virtual I.O. device provided by the host hypervisor. Virtual path through is similar to path through in that the guest hypervisor allows a nested VM to directly access I.O. device, but the guest hypervisor assigns virtual I.O. device to the nested VM instead of physical I.O. devices. As a result, for the same example of sending data over network, Net nested VM can send data with a single exit, just like single level virtualization case. Let's take a deeper look how it really works. For virtual path through, the host hypervisor provides additional virtual I.O. device to a VM that is not necessary for guest hypervisor. In addition, the host hypervisor also provides virtual IMU to the VM. This virtual hardware enables the guest hypervisor to leverage path-through. For path-through, IOMMU is a key hardware component, which makes an I.O. device access virtual machine's memory correctly and securely. So, from the guest hypervisor's perspective, virtual IOMMU and virtual I.O. device look like physical, physical hardware, so the guest hypervisor can leverage existing software mechanisms to assign the virtual I.O. device to the next VM, which involves programming virtual IMU. Virtual IMU makes the assigned virtual I.O. device access nested VM's memory correctly and securely. Note that virtual I.O. MMU is software and doesn't require a physical I.O. MMU. Once the virtual I.O. device is assigned, a nested VM can, inter can interact with the device without guest hypervisor's intervention, and the interaction is done with a single exit instead of multiple exits. The second example is virtual timers. On Intel x86 architecture, there is, just one, there is just one physical timer, which is called an LAPIC timer. So programming this timer inside the VM will exit and be emulated by the hypervisor because the hypervisor is using the physical timer already. For the same reason, programming this timer inside the nested VM will exit to the guest hypervisor as shown in the diagram on the left. With DVH design, we provide an additional LAPIC timer to the VM, which is virtual LAPIC timer. When the guest hypervisor enables this timer to the nested VM, the host hypervisor maps the virtual timer to the nested VM's LAPIC timer. So, programming a timer in a nested VM will be transparently handled by the host hypervisor with a single exit. So, to evaluate performance improvement with DVH, we ran seven widely used application workloads, NetPerf, Test, Network Latency, and Bandwidth, Apache, Memcached, and MySQL are popular web server, key value store, and database applications. Hackbench tests performance of running multiple processes on multi-core processors. We used um, Intel x86 Xeon processor, which has VMCS shadowing, that is architecture extensions for improving nested virtualization performance on Intel x86. We used two machines connected through 10 gig network and used them as a server and a client. We configured to use four physical or virtual CPUs for the system we test, such as native execution and VM and nested VM configurations. We used KVM QEMU as a host and a guest hypervisor and used Linux as a guest operating system. Lastly, we use virtio when we use virtual I.O. devices. 
This graph shows VM and native VM performance overhead normalized to the native execution. So lower is better and means less overhead. For VM measurements, we show the virtual I.O. configuration in which a VM is using virtual I.O. devices and the path through configuration in which a VM is using an assigned physical I.O. device. For native VM measurements, we show virtual I.O. path through DVH-VP which is only using virtual path through and DVH, which is using all four techniques. For the VM case, both virtual I.O. and path through provide mostly similar performance. Even though path through provides better performance for NetPurp RR, RR and Apache, the virtual I.O. model overall provides sufficient performance for the VM case, and the performance is close to native execution. For the nested VM case, performance differences among different VM configurations are substantial. As expected, virtual I.O. model shows significant overhead for most of the workloads. Path through model provides much better performance, but not as close to the VM performance in many cases. This is the best we can do with current software and hardware approaches with sacrificing important virtualization features such as VM migration. DVH-VP shows much better performance compared to virtual I.O. case and makes nested VM performance compatible to path through for most application workloads, such as Apache and Memcached. However, most importantly, only DVH is able to provide nested virtualization performance almost as good as VM case for all application workloads, including Hackbench. These experimental results, results show that DVH successfully solved the exit multiplication problem for nested virtualization. In summary, we introduced direct virtual hardware, or DVH, that handles an exit from a nested VM without guest hypervisor's intervention, and therefore removes exit multiplication. At the same time, DVH also retains hypervisor interposition and its benefits such as migration. We designed and implemented four DVH mechanisms on Intel x86 architecture using the KVM hypervisor. With them, we show that nested virtualization performs close to single level virtualization. Lastly, DVH supports more than two levels of virtualization and also provides performance close to single-level virtualization. Details are in the paper. Thank you.